Hello and welcome to another demonstration. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do zero touch provisioning with Arista switches in conjunction with the Ansible Automation Platform to kind of complete the full build out of your switch environment. The idea being behind zero touch provisioning is I can take a brand new Arista switch and really most of the major manufacturers support it, whether it's going to be Arista, Cisco, Juniper, XYZ, they're all really pretty much going to support some form of zero touch provisioning and a lot of them are very similar. In this instance, I take a default blank switch, plug it into the network. What it's going to do is pull the information to do a base configuration on it and then contact the Ansible Automation platform to do the full configuration on that device. So in essence, I can take uh, a switch, I can just have it drop ship to a site, I can have somebody pretty non-technical plug this piece of kit in and about six and a half minutes later, it's got its complete configuration in place and it's ready to pass traffic. It's pretty awesome. So I'm going to start with the router. The router on my lab environment is this MicroTik here, and it is terminating DHCP operations for my VLAN. And that's very important because these switches, whenever they first boot with a blank configuration, they try and pull an IP address uh, via DHCP boot P and they're going to ask for some additional information to be passed over. And so I am looking for a DHCP option and uh, in particular option 67 and options really just give you the ability to pass additional information over to the requesting client. In this case, you can see I have it, Greg Arista ZTP. I have it set, which is this right here where it is pointing to a configuration script. So I am in this case using TFTP to my router because it also acts as a TFTP server as well. MicroTix are pretty awesome little pieces of kit. And it's going to specify this specific file, greg-arista-ctp-script, to be passed over to the switch. And that script has kind of a default configuration built in. And so here's just my TFTP configuration. You can see, hey, if they request this file, give them this file. And uh, I've got it set to read only. So as a switch pops up, it's provision this uh, this little piece of um, IP addressing, right? They pull that script and they're going to go through the operations for that. So now that I've taken a look at that, let's pop in here and actually take a look at the script itself just to give you an idea of what's going on in there. So you could see from here, there's not a whole lot in here. I really put some default information. I named the switch provision me. I've got a default IP address. This is going to be the provision IP. So 10, 1, 12, 99, every device that gets booted with this, that uh, wants to, you know, be auto provisioned by the system is going to pull this IP address. So really you need to kind of do this one switch at a time. That's kind of the only caveat in the way I'm doing this is if you have multiple switches, you try and auto provision simultaneously, they're all going to pull that same IP address. This could obviously be modified to use just DHCP, right? So I could say IP address DHCP. If I were to change this to DHCP, I would be able to provision multiple of these simultaneously. As you can see here, I also have kind of the default gateway that it's going to point to. And then really the interesting bit is right down here at the bottom, this event handler call AAP. So trigger on startup config. So the way this works is the switch will uh, boot up. It will pull that IP address. Uh, it will take the option 67 and it will apply this configuration It'll reboot again. And then as soon as it comes up and is back online within about four or five seconds, it will call this script right here. And if you take a look at this script it's broken into two parts. First part is it takes the management IP address that it has applied. And in this case, it's going to be uh, management one's IP 12.99. Now, again, if we did it via DHCP, it would auto pull or rather it would figure out what IP address was pulled and it would set it as sys IP. The next I uh, grep it to get just the um, IP portion out of that. And then I have a curl command in here. So this curl command, what it does is it calls the Ansible Automation Platform. As you can see here, it passes over some extra VARs. And so extra variables are those that are passed to a playbook at runtime and have the highest precedence. So that system IP is going to get passed in as the variable name host underscore IP address. So I can use that in my playbook however I want. And I'm going to use it to determine the IP addressing that I need to connect to. 
and ultimately divine what uh, default gateway needs to be on the configuration, some various other things like that. But I'm also passing over a username and password. My username and password here is what I've got in the script in my GitHub. I would modify these two credentials. And in fact, I've done that in my environment. And those credentials have access to run a single uh, job template or workflow. In my case, it's a workflow. In this example I'm showing here, it's a job template. But it's going to fire that job template off, passing over that one IP address. That's really it as far as the zero touch provisioning system goes. So it's going to boot up pull this configuration and make the curl command when it comes online. So I'm going to go ahead and fire that off while we're talking. I will come into my VMware environment and I'll click the go button. So this is going to take a little while and through the magic of editing, I will make this go much quicker. All right, now that the switch has booted, it says provision dash me, I'm going to pop over the Ansible Automation platform, and within just a couple of seconds, we should see the workflow kick off. There it goes. So it's beginning the workflow launch. I'll take a look at the workflow itself. If I click in, I can see very first thing it's doing is running the Arista Zero Touch provisioning script. After it runs that playbook, it's then going to run in parallel and complete all the rest of these jobs. So it's going to finish off Arista routes and then eventually the uh, IP addresses as well as the Arista ACLs, uh, VLAN database, and Arista VLANs. So it's going to be pretty fast provisioning of all this stuff, and I'm doing it as infrastructure as code. Now, inf infrastructure as code means I define how the infrastructure is going to look in a Git repository, for example, and then the automation will take that information and actually apply it to the devices. So I don't have to log in to make configuration changes to my equipment anymore. So while this runs, I'll take a look at some of the rest of the infrastructure. So in here, I've got all of my playbooks that I'm running, right? So the Arista ACLs, the IP addresses, all those little job templates we see in each one of these little job templates actually correspond to a different playbook. So that way I can kind of mix and match them. Uh, if I want to configure various portions at different times, I can just choose those instead of having them all in one big playbook. So it kind of makes everything modular. Now the matching happens inside of my inventory. So if I pop into here and I look for the Arista Zero Touch provisioning. So in a production environment, probably what I would do is I would have a CMDB or configuration management database. It's some database that exists somewhere that maintains a list of all of my devices. I use ServiceNow CMDB a lot because, well, number one, a lot of my customers use it. But number two, it's actually really easy to interoperate with uh, inside of ServiceNow with the Ansible Automation Platform. So if I take a look at some of the default configurations, all of my kit in here is Arista. So I've got my connection and network OS configured as such. I've also got a kind of little default serial number in there that's going to get overridden uh, here momentarily. But I have three hosts in my environment. I've got the provision host. And so this is what I use uh, for uh, the provisioning scripts. Whenever it calls in, I use a generic quote unquote provision host and really all of its information gets replaced by what gets passed over. But this switch is going to be switch 90. So I'm going to take a look in here and the only information it really has stored for this host is the IP address that it's going to have once it's completed and then it's got its serial number. And so that's what I'm matching in my playbook here, my Arista zero touch provisioning playbook, Arista zero TP or ZTP, I should say. My zero touch provisioning playbook, what happens is it pops in at the beginning and it sets the Ansible host as host IP address. So host IP was the IP address in the zero touch provisioning script right here in this zero touch provisioning script. When it calls over, remember it's passing over an extra variable. So it's passing over the system IP address. And so I'm setting Ansible underscore host, which is uh, the new IP address that provision host is going to point to. So now I've got the IP that was passed over from that newly uh, provisioned switch, right? It, it stood up and I'm going to do some basic information. I'm going to connect in and I'm going to gather facts from that switch. And what I'm really looking for in there is the serial number. You see my next step, I'm going to loop through 
uh, my inventory and I'm going to compare the serial number from the serial number I just got off of this new device and as soon as I locate a match on that serial number I'm going to configure new host for uh, the new host variable. I'm going to set that variable as the host I found. And so in my inventory, it's going to loop through. It's going to find this specific host and it's going to set this name as new host. It's then going to go through and do some basic configuration on the device. I'm going to figure out what the default gateway is via regex. I'm going to place that on the device. I'm going to put uh, some configuration information in place. And then ultimately what I'm going to do is I am going to re- uh, reconnect to that switch because I'm changing the IP address to that of, uh, of what's in the inventory. And then once I connect back in and everything is configured on the new IP addressing and everything's great, I will uh, issue a uh, running config startup config, like a copy over there. So I'm just going to save the configuration of that device. Now, once that's completed in my workflow over here, which all of my configuration should actually be done by now, and it is. Once it's configured this, now it's going to fire off these other ones in parallel. So I'm going to configure the VLAN database, the access lists, and the routes. Now I'm doing these in a couple of different ways just to show you how there's a little bit of variety. There's often multiple ways you can complete any one task in here. And so I am going to look at VLAN database, how I'm configuring that, as well as how I'm configuring the VLANs. So let me pop in here and look at my vlan database.yml and in here what i'm doing is i am taking the vlan database information i'm going to parse that with the eos vlans uh, module so the arista.eos so that's my collection that i'm using the arista eos and then i'm using the eos vlans module inside of there and it's got this cool option called parsed for state parsed and so what i'm doing is i'm looking up the uh, inventory hostname dash VLANs DB file. And I'll pop in here. I've got the inventory hostname VLANs dash DB. So I'm going to open that file. And as you can see, this is a straight copy and paste, uh, rather copy and paste from the command line, the CLI. If I was going to issue these commands and uh, then is, you know type show run, this is actually what pops up. And so I can copy and paste this in. So I'm building this based on you know, just what it looks like directly in the configuration. And that's important because this parse command will take regular uh, CLI commands and it will parse them and put them into a data model. And the data model is pretty complex. Well, it's not really complex. There's just a lot of options. So to parse out certain things like access list, it takes a lot of variableized information. So to keep it a little bit more succinct, say for ACLs, I can keep it in the CLI mode I can issue the parsed command and that will parse it to break it out variableized. I'm going to save that as a, uh, as I'm going to register it rather as a variable in here called parsed config. Then I'm going to take that parsed config variable and I'm going to use that to push it uh, with the same EOS VLANs command uh, as state overridden. So it's going to override all the configurations that are in place right now with what I've configured on the command line. So say for example, I had, uh, 40 VLANs configured and uh, they didn't need to be there, right? Because I only have four VLANs that need to be configured along with their names. What this will do is it will override all of those and replace them with just what needs to be there, right? So making this script item potent, right? The idea being if it's already in this existing state, nothing will happen, right? If it needs to remove VLANs, it will. If it needs to add VLANs, it will. So it allows you to do all of that kind of in one succinct command. Now, having said that, let's move on to the other one for configuring VLANs themselves. I will pop back into the main and it's just going to be VLANs. And so this one, I create my own custom data model for this. Let me open up that file. I'll go into configs and it should be VLANs.yml. And you can see what I mean by data model in uh, that I have created some arbitrary variable named VLANs. And inside there, I created a list and I have the interface as well as the mode and then additional information associated with it, right? So here it's a trunk port and then I have the trunk allowed VLANs on here, here for ether two. I've got it set to mode access. So it's just gonna be a regular access port and then the access VLAN associated with it. 
And so my script is going to loop through all of this information and apply it in different ways, right? So it's not a copy and paste off the command line or a show run. I actually created a data model to store all this information in. So my configuration will look that information up, pull that variable into memory, and now it's going to first loop through looking for any devices that are uh, in mode trunk and it will apply their configuration thusly and then when it hits the next task it's going to loop through that same set of information looking for anything that's configured as an access VLAN and it will apply all that information here. So two different ways to do it you can create your own data model store the information or you can keep it in CLI format use the modules to parse it and then apply it as well right so two different ways to accomplish the same thing. And in certain situations, one is easier than the other. Some environments, uh, one may be preferable to the other. I'm not saying one is wrong or one is right. It's just whatever happens to be right for you. So taking a look at the switch, I'm going to log in. Right, you can see that it changed the host name. And I should have all of my new configuration information there. You see all the VLANs. Uh, the IP addressing, the default gateway, everything's been put in place. I remember this was a blank switch, so it applied all this information item potently. I could rerun this, and theoretically it won't make any modifications because it's already in the existing state uh, that it should be in. So that is kind of a quick and dirty uh, demonstration of doing the Arista Zero Touch provisioning along with a little bit of information on infrastructure as code. If you have any questions or comments or you can see changing this or tweaking it or tuning it in your environment, I'd love to uh, hear from you. So uh, thanks and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.